What's cracking everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So if you're new here, the type of videos and content that I create are my documented series as an entrepreneur where you get to learn from all my wins and all my losses. So if you're looking for a way to make money on your own terms, this is going to be the perfect YouTube channel for you. So be sure to subscribe, turn that bell notification on, and turn that like button blue. So getting right into it, as you guys have seen from the very first episode, we've already gone through lots of trials and tribulations. All the way back from Arizona to San Diego, the transmission completely blew. There was transmission fluid leaking all over the freeway. We had to figure out a way to actually re either repair it or get it towed. And the funny part is that even the car that we took to actually get the RV ended up clapping out and completely breaking on the way back. So we had to leave it in a random parking lot like two hours away from where we live and actually just ended up driving the RV completely home. But in this episode, you're gonna see an actual walk through the RV. So let's get right into it. What is up guys? Wanted to come out here to uh, see what exactly the, the RV is gonna need. It's been about a week, maybe a, a week and a half since I last, since we parked the actual RV. So we still gotta take care of the actual transmission problem. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk around the RV to see exactly what needs to be done. First things first is I did see that this generator, I wanna see if I can get this generator to work. It's some old school generator, I guess, obviously from the 90s. So I gotta see what's cracking with that. You see these two, well, the whole entire ride back from Arizona. This was flapping in the air everywhere. The paint on it is a little dull. You can see it kinda looks brownish. But for the most part, we're just gonna pressure wash it and see what we can do with it and make it look better. Another thing as well is that this door right here is like kind of bent. So it actually doesn't close all the way. You have to like forcibly close it and then hold the door down. So see how there's a thing right here. I don't know if someone tried to, try, try to break into it. I don't know what's up with that stutter, but okay. I don't know what it is. Honestly, I don't know what it is about this RV, but the inside smells so bad. Like it smells so horrible. I slept in it already a couple nights just to test it out to see how it was. And honestly, I didn't want to come back inside the RV because of how bad it smelled. So I wish you could smell how it smells, but just know it doesn't smell that good. But yeah, here's the inside of the RV. Let me get some light going on in here. So a couple things here, I'll give you guys a quick walk around. Here's the RV. You can see too, it has this like a uh, rollout sunshade thing. I forget what they're called. Also has the AC unit up there see on the inside this is what the cab looks like looks pretty good this is on the top where the actual one of the beds will stay you can see it already has a bed it doesn't have it doesn't have an actual like under under tray so we're gonna have to make one out of plywood or something um, but you can see this whole entire place has been completely remodeled has a new sink no oven though or no stove top so we're gonna have to buy a stove top for it has a microwave has an ac unit that's remodeled floors has this futon here that turns into a bed if you'd like. Has these drawers here. You can see it's kind of like, for like kind of like a little pantry. Anytime you want to put anything in there. It has a water heater underneath here. It's an electric water heater, I believe. This is where you try to start the actual the generator. Here's the shower. The shower works. I've already tried it. The shower looks like. I believe this is the culprit of the smell because when I actually looked at how filled this thing was it seemed like it was almost all the way full um this is what the back bed looks like what we're gonna do here is we're probably gonna get some curtains here maybe for sure get some curtains here so something that can go across here so whoever's taking a deuce can get some privacy paint's okay you can see there's some flakes here this wallpaper this wallpaper needs to get completely replaced here you can see it's completely torn in the middle um, but i like to just get something that looks good you can see some of the stuff is not painted there but that's not a big deal but yeah, with this, we're gonna get go ahead and get a bed sheet over it and get some like some form of like something to make it look a lot better for for the next person and for pictures. If you see, there's a couple cabinets here on the top. All these lights turn on and off here. So let me let me actually start the, the engine for you so you guys can get a look. It has relatively low miles on it too. I think it has like 60k, which is super low. It has this dope ass boost gauge. Just kidding. That's a the gauge for uh, the RPMs. I guess they wired that in. Load up. Oh, it's the wrong key, bro. It starts pretty good. Um, sometimes the rear ABS, the rear ABS light turns on, so I'm not too sure what's what's Gucci with that. All the lights work. This actual AC unit, I was told it works, but I believe it either works only when it's plugged into the wall, like the whole entire RV. When the RV is plugged in, the AC will work, or 
when the actual generator is working. So that's why I want to make sure the generator works. I'll show you guys too what happens when we try to set up the generator. So you can hear it. And it almost starts, just backfires. So it's a it's this crank, but no start. None of these outlets work either. I believe it's gonna have to go off the generator. Keep in mind, this is my complete, absolute first time experiencing anything with RVs. I just figured the RV market would be a really good market to get into to start flipping. So you guys are gonna be along with me as I learn everything about the about RVs, the trials and tribulations. And we scored a really, really good RV for our first one. I mean, it's already remodeled. And we got it for a really, really good price. You can see too, it has a brand new refrigerator in it. That's electric. So now I think, I believe some of them go off of propane or gas or something. This one's from, this one's a 92 model, the actual RV. And it has a brand new refrigerator in it with a freezer. Also with this, this works, but I mean, at least I was told. I don't know exactly if it works or not, but I believe this will work once the generator is going. Um, it has this, this little toaster thing. All this stuff works. See the actual that works also get a like a curtain for this as well you can see all these lights turn on and off like with a with the touch of a finger but yeah what we're gonna do in general is just get this looking better you know with this too imagine all this stuff not here imagine like it with nice formal bed sheeting on this too maybe get some new like curtains for this place obviously you probably take that shelf out um you know obviously look how look how dirty this is you can't really tell yeah you can tell now but overall just like any other flip just like a car so with a car you get the car it's looking a little messed up you make it look nice again right you detail the outside you clean the inside take really good pictures of it and you post it up it's gonna be the exact same thing with this but kind of like a home so we're gonna clean everything here uh make everything look super nice clean all the walls uh do what we can with all, with the curtains Get that transmission pulled as well which is gonna be crazy but we're gonna figure it out nonetheless so far so good we paid 4200 for it probably to get it here we probably are probably about 4500 invested into it with gas and all the bullshit that we went through so i'm gonna show you too i'm gonna take this off and i'll show you guys what that looks like after but yeah like i said get that generator going clean the outside make the outside look super good i'll show you guys the roof too the roof actually looks pretty nice because like i said it's my first time ever doing anything like this i wanted to make sure that the roof had no leaks because the last thing i'd want is to buy an rv that leaked from the top so i believe the top of this has been repainted it has all these vents i don't know if this is like aftermarket or what's going on you can see too, it's, it's had like patches done to it prior. I don't know what this is. Is this like a, right, some radio action? What's going on here? Here's the AC unit. You can see the front end has had some uh, patchwork done to it. Oh, you can probably pressure wash it and make it look a little bit better. But yeah, look at the top. The top doesn't look that bad. No leaks, it's already rained. I slipped inside of it when it rained. So it's looking pretty good. It's just about cleaning it up, trying to make it look better. This AC unit looks relatively new. You can see the fins on it look pretty nice. So I'm finding some pretty good pluses about this RV. So the main thing is trying to get that generator going. I'm gonna take out the carbonate, see, look at some videos, see what I can find. The main thing right now though is pulling out that transmission, which is gonna suck. But once it's in, once it's out, when once it's fixed, it's gonna be a lot better. Just it's about getting all the work done to it, and um, we should be getting this done relatively quick. And I will open this up and show you guys what the actual engine bay looks like. Part of the engine where the transmission's at. Shouldn't be too hard to pull. It shouldn't be that hard to pull this transmission out. I mean, what I'm thinking is normally like on cars, you have to literally stick your hand up in the transmission tunnel and get these top transmission bell housing bolts. But since I have this actual cover that I can take off and actually access the top of the bell housing from the cab, it shouldn't be too difficult to actually pull the transmission. So all I gotta undo is the drive shaft, some of this, this wiring harness part, and then um, bell housing bolts and it looks like it should be a relatively easy pull i think these are the actual transmission transmission lines but 
I'm not gonna say it's easy. I'm not gonna say it's easy, but it shouldn't be too difficult to get this job done. So once I get this pulled, it's gonna be running pretty smooth. All right, I'm coming at you guys live in the editing studio late at night. I think it's like one o'clock in the morning. Gotta get these edits done. But nonetheless, as you guys can see, the walk around went really smooth on the RV. In the next couple episodes, you're gonna see us actually have to pull the transmission and a lot of the difficulties that we experienced going through that. I thought it was actually gonna be an easy, easier pull than what it really was. And what I mean by pull, I mean actually uh, removing the transmission from the engine. It was pretty difficult. Having to record and do all that stuff like that, it was, it was a task. But nonetheless, you guys get to see this struggle between my brother and I on what we had to do. And it's pretty entertaining to watch. So be sure to tune in to the next episode and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.